So you wanna light nighttime scenes in Blender. It can be kind of a challenge. So I'm gonna walk you through three scenes that I've lit recently and teach you along the way. First, we'll be starting with this larger scene as most of the elements can be taught in this one scene. So first, what I like to do is start with just no lighting at all in the world. And I like to start with a little bit of fill from an HDRI. So if you go to hdrihaven.com, you can get free HDRIs and I've chosen some night ones here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put an HDR lighting set up in here, set that to night, and we're going to set that to one. And you can see here that I'm starting to get some general fill lighting, but no harsh lighting sources as it's a nighttime HDRI. And although this is a good start, this is of course very boring. So we need to think about where our light source comes from a nighttime shoot. Now you may have man-made sources such as torches or lamps, but in this case, we have a moon. So we need to ensure that the lighting looks like it comes from the moon. So if I come over here, you can see that I went ahead and did that by creating a large area light here to splash light all from the moon's direction. However, you may notice that the moon itself is not very bright as it's not actually emitting any light. So that's why I went ahead and created a moonlight here and just put a point light in front of that moon to make it look glowing. You can also, of course, make your moon object in emission as well, though this will add a lot more noise to your scene. My dynamic VFX pack is now on sale at Blender Market, and this has completely customizable VFX assets that you can drag and drop right into your viewport, both EV and Cycles compatible. If you're interested, you can also go check out a free sample pack. Currently, I'm running a sale. See the description for more details. Also, if you're interested in my Patreon, I have materials, projects, time lapses, video walkthroughs, and discounts available there as well. Now, the next important thing to consider when lighting your scenes is the lighting color. So oftentimes when it comes to nighttime lighting, you're going to be working in the cooler colors. It's going to be things like light blue, cyan, dark blue, purples, sometimes a little bit of pink. And those colors are generally going to create the more nighttime atmosphere that you're going for. However, you may need to mix in colors on the opposite side of the color wheel, like orange, to add visual interest. So let's begin to see what that looks like here. First, what I wanted to do is go ahead and just add some general fill lighting to my area. So here you can see that I turn on a giant area light here. Now, I know this goes against a bit of what I was saying earlier by using blues, but I wanted to mix in just a tiny bit of orange for visual interest. Because if you take a look here at the color wheel, all of our nighttime colors are here. So by picking a color from the opposite side, we'll get a bit more interest in dynamic lighting. Now, if I go ahead here, you can see that I have another giant area light over here, and this one is purple. And you can see that those are starting to cancel each other out a bit and create an interesting color combination. So you may be wondering, why am I using such giant light sources? Well, oftentimes when you think of nighttime lighting or moons, you're not getting harsh lighting sources like the sun, and thus you want your shadows and things to be very soft. So whenever you're kind of lighting your nighttime scenes, consider making your lights very large. Now this isn't super interesting. And also we kind of want some lighting from the top just to give us more general fill since the HDRI isn't giving us much. So we're actually gonna go ahead and use a sun here. Now you may be wondering why I chose to use a sun lamp in a nighttime scene. Well, this essentially is just an atmosphere light that will cast it from a direction. And if you come over here, you can see that we can set the light time to blue and we can set the strength really high so it covers our entire scene, but we can set this angle to a huge number here, like 25 to 50 degrees, and then it'll maintain those soft shadows. However, this is no longer looking like nighttime. It's introducing a bit too much light into our scene. So we're gonna cut this out with what is called a cookie. Now a cookie is an industry standard term for when they put these uh, textures and things in front of lights to create interesting shadows in the scenes. So if I go ahead and switch to render view here, you can see that this plane here is actually a texture with an alpha on it. So the way I've gone about creating that cookie is I've put this giant plane over my scene and then I've pulled in a grunge map from my asset pack. And you can see here, this is what the grunge map looks like. And then I've crushed it with a color lamp and then I've just plugged that into the alpha here. And what that's doing is blocking out a lot of the light. So only a little bit of the sunlight's getting through. This kind of gives us the illusion of kind of clouds and other things blocking the lighting while also darkening the scene a tiny bit. Now, next up, we have a scene that kind of looks like nighttime lighting, but ultimately it's kind of 
boring. So we're gonna go ahead and add some extreme splashes of saturated color in there. And here we're really gonna learn into those blues and purples that I talked about before. So let's go ahead here and check out this castle here. And if I zoom in here on the castle, you can see here that I've put on a castle left and right light. And what that is doing is adding that blue and purple light there. So you can see these are smaller lights that have very saturated colors. Likewise, I wanted the sky to be a bit more interesting. So I lit it from the top and the bottom here with two very long and slender area lights that also have dark blue and purple lights. And you can see that now when we pull out, we're starting to get a lot more interesting color. So if we wanna continue making this look more like a nighttime shoot and adding a lot more interest in the visuals, we should consider adding some fog. Fog is oftentimes associated with night times, not just because of cinema, but because of all the moisture in the air kind of generating at night and being a bit more visible. So you can see here that I have created a couple environmental effects here. Let's take a look at how these are made. Here's a general fog. This is just a cube that moves from the beginning of the camera all the way to the back of the sky. And if you see here, the density is set super, super low. But what I've done is gone ahead and add a blue color here. And you can see that now we are getting this nice kind of gradual blue fall off, eliminating some of those colors and giving it overall a more nighttime vibe. I feel like this ground isn't very interesting, so I'm gonna go ahead and add one more fog. And this fog here, as you can see, is a much more slender fog object that is just barely above the ground. Again, this just uses a volume shader, but this time I chose to use a brighter color as fog oftentimes as it collects on the ground will gather the light and kind of be a bit brighter and maybe wider to the visible eye. And you can see here that the density is being controlled with a color ramp and a noise texture plugged into that. And what that noise texture is doing is kind of giving us these various elements and pockets with no fog. And by keeping this very small, it looks like a ground fog and adds an additional layer of depth. Lastly, what I'm going to add into the scene are some light rays. Now that might seem a bit silly coming from a nighttime scene, but by adding a little bit of light rays there, kind of coming from the moon onto the castle there, you can see that we're getting a more interesting look. Now let's look at how I'm about creating those light rays. I actually have all these in a node group and I'm gonna go ahead and bring this open large just so you can see. Essentially what it's doing is taking a noise texture and then stretching that noise texture to create the light rays. I'm just gonna go ahead here and pause so you can see this node setup in case you wanna copy that. Now I'm just going to hop over to this project and a lot of these same elements are applied here. You can see that we have a general kind of sun lamp we have a spot lamp that goes right at our character, another point light for our character, some fog here, and then some area lights that add broad fill with large colors. You can see there that there's a big blue and purple there. And what I wanna point out in this scene is that when you're trying to light your characters in nighttime scenes, generally your lighting is gonna be too large and too soft to adequately light your character. So you need to fake it a bit. So I recommend using spot lamps and pointing those at your characters with maybe some warmer colors, and that will help kind of isolate the lighting on your characters only, and not contribute too much lighting to ruin the night mood of the rest of the scene, but still makes your character visible. Now, this is one of my favorite scenes lighting-wise in my short film, and this is a great example of showing light in the darkness. There are a couple elements we're gonna break apart here. So, what you may notice is that we have a natural light source here with the torch on our character, and then we also have these glowing mushrooms. So a lot of the same things were applied, but I'm gonna show you the few tricks that are unique to the scene. First of all, we have the torch here, and you can see that the torch actually has a point light attached to it. So when you're lighting night scenes like that, and you have lamp sources, torches, flashlights, or other things, I definitely recommend using a spotlight or a point light and parenting that to the object, and then really cranking up the value of that to really dramatically kind of light the scene. So the torch, of course, would not give off this much light, but we're gonna go ahead and kind of fake it. Now, the other thing I wanna point out is that there are also little point lights scattered throughout here. And you can see these more when things come into focus. And you can see that these point lights here, although they serve no realistic function, what they are doing are adding splashes of little orange color that kind of mix into the blue background and just create a bit of visual interest with that color contrast. But the other thing I wanna show you that's a small trick in here is that we have these mushrooms here. 
And these mushroom particles, if I grab one of these, you can see have this, what looks like a complex node setup. But essentially, what you can do is with any object in your scene that you want to light at nighttime, you can use an emission value. But as you know, if you plug an emission value into an object and crank it all the way up, it's just going to turn pure white. So what I've done here is use a mix shader. This is the same exact node setup for both of the mushrooms, but the only difference is the emission strength. I've plugged both of those into a mix shader and the top one here will control the lighting and the bottom one here will control the look of the object. And then I'm going to plug the is camera ray into the factor. And what that allows me to do is that we can move around the scene and you can see that our objects here, our mushrooms, their textures are still visible. They look like they're glowing, but they're not completely blown out. If I was to put the emission strength here to 50, you could see that they would become pure white. But if I lower the emission strength here to just one, you can see they're not adequately lighting the scene. So this is like a little trick you can do to kind of fake lighting. This also mimics what they do in Hollywood as well. They may go ahead and put a fireplace in a scene, but that fireplace is not lighting the scene. They'll have a very bright light hooked up to a fire animation flicker that will create the lighting in that scene. So essentially what we can do here is fake our emission strength and get more lighting into our scene.